Driving results in business these days takes something special. It's a combination of the right info and the right energy. Pam Moore has both and is here to help you avoid the pitfalls and guide your business and life by leveraging and integrating social media, powerful branding, and digital marketing. Welcome to Social Zoom Factor. Now it's time to live life zoomed. Do you want to humanize your brand and create memorable customer experiences that inspire your audiences to scream about it from a social mountaintop? The Marketing Nuts helps companies humanize their brand and transform their social business from the inside out. Visit their website at www.themarketingnutswithaz.com for a client list and some amazing free resources to get you started down the path of success. Hey there, Zoomers, and welcome to Social Zoom Factor. This is your host, Pam Moore. All right, today we are talking about how event professionals, event organizers, anybody who is in charge of putting on an event where you are inviting speakers, we're talking about how you can maximize the investment that you make in the people that you are hiring to come and speak to your audience, to inspire, to empower to train and ignite and excite the people who are paying to attend your event. So we're going to talk about eight solid proven ways that you can maximize the investment, whether that be time or money or both, the investment that you're making and bringing these amazing speakers and trainers to your event and how you can make sure that they are igniting your audience to success so that your event is memorable and people want to come back again and again and again. So we are going to dig right in. This is a value packed podcast. I promise you are going to get takeaways that you can start implementing today. So let's go. Number one tip is you need to make sure that you choose the right speaker to begin with and don't get caught up in numbers and fame. And yes, sometimes you need to hire that speaker because they're famous and you know they're going to attract a huge audience, but you need to look at more than the fame and the numbers and the vanity metrics on social. You need to make sure that you do that double click and that you know that the speaker is going to truly connect with your audience and that they, what they have to say and the way that they communicate and the stories that they are going to tell is not only going to connect with your audience, but also will provide value for them. Well, they'll get something out of it that is memorable and that you want to be looking at what is that full package that the speaker brings to you. Okay, what is the value that they offer you and your audience? And is their heart in the right place? Are they as excited as you are to serve your audience? That's a key question. Think about that. Are the speakers that you're hiring as excited as you are to serve their audience, to serve your audience? Because when you hire a speaker or a trainer, it needs to be a match. It needs to be somebody where they are as excited to serve your audience as you are to put on the event. Because when you find that magic synergy, that is when beautiful things happen at an event. That is when the speaker walks off stage and, you know, they're getting hugs and tears and whatever it may be. They're just saying, wow, you really helped me solve that problem I had. I can't wait to take it to the next level. So make sure they are as excited as you are to serve your audience. Number two is do your research on the speaker before you jump on the phone with them. So jumping on the phone with them or having that first email conversation, that first touch is so important. So you want to be looking at things like what does their community look like? So how are they engaging with their community online? What's the size of that community? What are their top social and digital and media channels that they use? Are they using you know, the social networks such as Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and Instagram? 
Which ones do they use the most? Where are they getting the most engagement and why? Maybe make a list of ideas for how you can work together how you can have that mutual value before you get on the phone with them. What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? What are other events that they have participated in? And how can you learn from the success? You know, take a look at events they've spoke at or trained at recently. What are the hashtags for those events? What are people saying about them? What was the vibe of those conversations? And how can you incorporate the same or even take it to the next? next level. So leveraging what they've already done, seeing what is successful and looking at that will hopefully give you some ideas of, wow, we could do that too and incorporate it into our event, you know, in this specific way, because the value of digital and social today is there's so much data out there for speakers, particularly ones who are very social and active in the digital and online world. There's so much data that you can grab just by doing a quick search on their name or the hash, use their name with a hashtag in front of it, you know, the little number sign, if that's what you're used to calling those things, and do a search on hashtags for the events that they've been at. Go look at LinkedIn and see, you know, what are the past event hosts saying about them? What are the images that are getting tweeted and shared out to the social channels? That is a gold mine of data to help you form what this relationship is going to look like with your new partner and friend in this new speaker. Now, number three is make sure that you understand what is in it for your speaker. So it's not just about you. It's also how can you help them help you? How can you help them achieve their goals? What are their goals? Maybe do they have a new book that they launched or are launching? Do they have a podcast they would like more awareness on? Do they have a new video channel? Do they have a blog that they you know need to get some more movement on? How can you work together for you know where you both have value? Number four is make sure that you organize your goals and the details of the event from the very start, okay, from day one. Make your goals 100% crystal clear. You have to know what does success look like for you and how are you going to measure success? Speakers love when you get on the phone with them and you are able to clearly articulate what the event is, what the goals of the event are, and what success looks like. Like, who your audience is, what hashtags you're using, how you're going to be incorporating speakers into your event, trainers into your event, sponsors into your event. Have a succinct synopsis of what your goals are, what your objectives are, and how your event is going to be played out. Speakers love that because when they know that they are showing up for an event that is well managed and well organized, it makes their job easier. They know they're not going to have to chase you down for things. And, you know, when you start negotiating things like speaker fees and travel budgets and those types of things and trying to get more time out of the speaker while they're on site, you know, for us, when you hire me, one of the things I do is you get me that whole time, right? I've always done that and I'm there for you. I'll come to your dinners. You know, we can figure that out. I can, you know, help you pass out awards. I can, you know, be an MC when you need that and I can do it keynote to break out. So when you're trying to negotiate and get, you know, more time from your speaker than just maybe one presentation, when you can show that you are easy to work with and that you are organized in your event and how you're bringing people together, that is really going to help that speaker want to work with you. And it's simple things like, you know, what hashtags are you using? How, what are the specific URLs you're going to be using to track success? Uh, let them know that you're going to be organizing all these things because that's going to help them maximize their time at your event as well so that they can be sure that they are getting a high ROI. You also want to make sure that you are including things like the speaker social handles and the URLs and all of those details ahead of time because as you organize your goals and your details, that is going to help you organize your speaker. You can't just wait till the last minute to keep those details crystal clear because if you organize those from day one, and I know this is not how a lot of event profs work because I've worked with a lot of them, they tend to wait till these things till the last minute. So when you organize them up front, then the speaker is able to leverage those pre-event. 
you're getting a max value by being organized and communicating those goals and those details so that they can help you the most that they can. Okay, we are halfway through our eight strategies for you to maximize investment that you are making in your speakers and trainers for your event. I have four more that you must hear. So make sure to give a quick listen to our sponsors because they are what keeps our podcast zooming. I will be right back. Do you ever feel stuck in a rut like your online business and social business isn't all that it could be? The Marketing Nuts Agency helps small businesses clear up to the Fortune 50 brands, provide clarity and vision for current and future programs. The Marketing Nuts believe in ROI-driven decision-making while still inspiring audiences with relevant content. From social business strategy and consultation, influencer marketing, to corporate training and workshops, and fully outsourced digital and social programs, the Marketing Nuts helps you prioritize your investment, impact business goals, and inspire your audience to invest in a relationship with you. To start the conversation, visit www.themarketingnutswithaz.com. I'm back. Okay. Tip number five is I want you to look for ways to find massive synergy and value for everybody. Okay, so how can you incorporate your goals with the speaker goals, with your sponsor goals, with your attendee goals? How can you bring these goals together for value? And how can you maybe look at considering leveraging the media that your speakers have? So if they have a podcast, if they have a video channel that's getting a lot of movement, if they have a blog, you know, whatever type of media they're using. Maybe it's a social network, it's Instagram or Facebook or Twitter that they're really rocking. How can you leverage their channels that they already love and are invested in and have their community there? Because they have a top goal to build community. Otherwise, you're likely wouldn't be bringing them to your event, right? You, you're hoping that they have a community that they're also bringing to your event. So tap into that. Maybe you could interview some of your, have them interview some of your top sponsors, have them interview some of the top speakers or industry leaders that are attending the event or that are supporting and sponsoring the event. How can you create connections that help open doors, right? How can you help them connect with other people? What are media opportunities that exist? How can you look for ways that you can add value as a collective community and more than them just standing on a stage, a speaker stage for the short amount of time that they get? Speakers love to network and build their community, particularly the most successful ones do. So I know I just got back from India and I was speaking, I was an opening keynote speaker at an event in Mumbai, India, and it was the Content Jam event with the E4M, um, it was the Exchange for Media Group, and you can go check out the hashtag, it's E4M Content Jam, and I'll tell you, there were so many non-quantitative goals that were achieved at this event. I mean, the event team really went above and beyond to create those connections and, you know, create those moments where I was able to truly connect with people. They were organized from the very start, you know, with pre, during, and post-event, and we're now in post-event. And because of the amazing experience I had with them and with the community and with the opportunities that were given given to me, um, it makes me want to share more about the event, you know, and I have case study after case study about these types of events that I have spoke at. And I, I did a podcast a while back about the MDMC Midwest digital marketing conference. So I encourage you to check that out as well. But just know that the more that you put in to finding that value and those synergies, the more everybody is going to get out of it. Not just you, but everybody. So then number six is communication. Okay, communication is absolutely key pre, during, and post event. Number one thing is you have to be organized and you need to respect the time and communicate 
only need to know information with your speakers. I think this is one of the biggest mistakes that I see event organizers make. And particularly once, and you know, you've hired a speaker, they're on board, and then you kind of pass the reins down to maybe somebody that's in a communications role or a project lead role, and they're organizing the event for you. Here's what happens. They start copying the speaker on every single piece of communication. Do not include speakers on long threads of email with many people that are going back and forth on topics that are simply irrelevant to the speaker. Because what's going to happen is the speaker is going to just put you on ignore. Not like they're going to hit the ignore button, but they're going to mentally put you on ignore because there's so much noise that's coming into the inbox. So you want to make sure that they don't miss those important details and so that you are focusing on communicating with them only about the top priorities and the things that matter and that you are clearly articulating your expectations and your timelines as early as you can. Tell them where they need to be, why they need to be there, who is going to meet them there. You know, if you're coordinating the travel for them or paying for the travel and the, you know, the transportation to and from the hotel uh, and the airport, make sure they know who's on first for what. Those details may seem like little details to you, but when you're a busy speaker and you're traveling and you have a million emails you've received from an event organizer and their team, it's hard to find those details. So communication is key. Less is more and focus on those top priorities. Number seven is to take care of your speaker, okay? The little things go a long way, like water. Make sure that they have a bottle of water. I can't tell you how many events I've been at where they forget to have water. Feed them. So maybe they're doing a long day. They're doing a couple back-to-back workshops and they're working through a lunch. Offer ahead of time, what would you like to eat? Like for me, I don't like to eat a big meal before I speak or even during when I'm speaking. I like, you know, just a a couple snacks. I do keto, so I don't need that much. Now I'll scarf down a dinner after the day is done, but, you know, a coffee for me, a glass of water, you know, if there's a Starbucks, I love a Starbucks. So those little things go a long way. Let them know where the restroom is. So if they have a back-to-back workshops, you know, and they have only a 20 minute break in between, them, make sure they know where the restroom is. Make it easy for them as possible to serve you and your audience. You don't want them worrying about those things. You want them to be able to focus on connecting with your audience and leveraging every minute that they can in um, connecting with your audience and serving value. And last but not least, this is so important, is number eight. It's do not forget the post-event opportunities. So do not forget that the event is not over when the event ends and people leave the facility. It continues. So have a plan up front of what does that post-event communication look like? How can you include the speaker in, you know, some post-show recaps? You know, negotiate up front if you have them do some post media and maybe they'll do a recap blog post and, you know, identify who are people within the event on your team or key leaders. This is again where you can bring in sponsors and key other speakers that they could interview on their media channels, on their podcast, on their video channel, whatever it may be, incorporate that and leverage that for the long haul. Make sure you keep those relationships going with the speakers and maybe you're going to have them come back next year. Don't just wait till next year to communicate with them right? Share their content as well. Stay in connection with them and let them know when you have something, you know, an interim event coming up or a way that you can partner together or something you'd like them to share. When you've done everything that I've talked about on this podcast today and you focused on understanding who that speaker is, understanding what their goals are, looking for opportunities for, you know, synergistic value and your communication has been on par and you take care of the little things and the big things at the event, they're going to be excited to help you post event because they are now invested in your event as a friend and as a partner and as part of your community. So your whole goal is that you are building a relationship with them and that you are inviting them in to your community to be a member of your community that serves and provides value and can be a leader that is there to help your community for possibly the short and the very long term. So there you have it in a nutshell. 
eight solid ways that you can increase the ROI on your investment in speakers and trainers when you are bringing them to events. If you need any help with your events or you need a speaker, I speak and train all over the globe. I spent 15 years working in corporate America before starting my own company. So I understand the ins and outs of both small business as well as corporate. And so I bring a lot to the table to inspire and connect with your audience, whether that be from an entrepreneurial perspective. I love doing women's events. Events. And of course, we do a lot of corporate training and digital and social and personal branding, coaching, that type of thing. So check us out at themarketingnutswithaz.com. I wish you the best of success with your events. If you're ready to Zoom your business and Zoom your life, then don't let the end of this episode be the end of your journey. Visit socialzoomfactor.com slash zoom for incredible free resources and guides. And be sure to join the Social Zoom Factor mailing list so you never miss an episode. We'll see you next time on Social Zoom Factor.